While there are many ways to hack a wireless network, the easiest is simply to trick the user into giving you the password themselves. We'll explore a tool that does exactly that called Wi-Fi Fisher on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. There are a lot of different attacks against Wi-Fi out there, and the majority of them actually use brute forcing in order to get the job done. Now what this means is you're placing a bet on whether someone's picked a lazy password, because if the password doesn't exist in the password list you're using, then you're doing all this brute forcing for nothing. Now because a lot of these techniques won't work, some people get bad results while using them, and the far easier technique is to simply trick the user into giving us the password themselves. Now we can do this by actually creating a fake login page and taking advantage of the fact that the average user doesn't know what the login page for their router looks like. To do this, we'll use a Python program called Wi-Fi Fisher, but in order to get it working, you'll need to have Kali Linux and a wireless network adapter uh, that's compatible with Kali Linux as well. Now this can be a little bit confusing for beginners, so if you're having a hard time deciding, you can check out one of our previous articles on how to select one on Nullbyte. Now, once you're ready to begin, you'll need to put these things together and select a wireless network that you have permission to audit, because this will kick everyone off, so it is illegal to use against networks that you don't own. Once you're ready, then we can begin. Now, to get started checking out Wi-Fi Fisher, the best thing to do is to go to the GitHub page here. If you scroll down, you can see a lot more information about the tool, including how it works and a lot of different uh, flags that you can use in order to make it more specific or go after a particular network. Now we're going to go ahead and actually use something that's kind of like a, almost like a graphic user interface. It kind of is more like Kismet than it is than uh, an actual total graphic user interface, but it's still a little bit more than a command line terminal. So it's pretty cool that Wi-Fi Fisher has this because it makes it more beginner friendly, and you'll see what I mean as soon as we start it up. Now to get started with this, you'll need to clone the repository. So you can do that by copying this address here, and then in a terminal window, you can, let me grab one, just type get clone. and then paste in the address here. Now I already have this, so it's gonna tell me the destination path already exists, but for you, it should go ahead and download the entire uh, repository, including all the files we need inside. So you can type CD and then Wi-Fi Fisher. And uh, once you're in the directory, you can type LS and we can see all the stuff in here, some of which is not installed by default. These were actually from one of our previous videos, but you can see there is a setup.py file and that is what we want. So to use this, we'll go ahead and type sudo python setup.py and then install. Now the installation script for this is pretty beefy, and for me it had to run for almost 20 minutes before it managed to grab everything. Now I also had a little bit of trouble when initially installing this, and it turns out the script, um, while it is really powerful, it is a little bit buggy sometimes. So there are some compromises or shortcuts you might have to make in order to use it, but it is still really effective. So now I have Wi-Fi Fisher, but it will give you an error when, if you try to run it without this other tool installed. So Rogue Host APD is a tool that is a variant of Host APD, but I wasn't able to get this installed properly on my system. I can see that the last time it was updated was 11 months ago, so it could just be a little bit out of date. But in general, I found that running Wi-Fi Fisher actually worked perfectly fine, provided that you were able to run it with a certain flag. So what this flag is, is right here, uh, Wi-Fi Fisher, tac tac forced host APD. Now this will restrict the functionality of Wi-Fi Fisher for some of the most more advanced attacks. And if you really want to get those attacks working, then I encourage you to maybe try working on getting Rogue Host APD working on your system. But for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to assume that you will have as much trouble as I did getting it working, so we'll focus on the one that works much more easily. So before we run this command, we're going to want to put our wireless network adapter into monitor mode, so it's the one that Wi-Fi Fisher will grab automatically. Now I'm going to go ahead and type ifconfig. And then I can see that it doesn't really see my network adapter yet, which might happen on your Kali system. So if I type IPA, 
I can see, here we go, this is the name of the wireless network adapter that I've just plugged in. So to put this into modern mode, I can type sudo airmon ng start wlan1, and this should go ahead and put our wireless network adapter into monitor mode, which will allow us to do all the fun stuff that Wi-Fi Fisher is going to need to do. So now I'm going to go ahead and run the command, uh, Wi-Fi Fisher tactac force host APD, and this should give us a pop-up window that allows us to select which nearby wireless network we want to attack. So as soon as this pops up, we'll be able to scroll down and you can see there's a lot of stuff kind of happening in the background. Here we go. We have a good list of wireless networks in the area that will continue to grow as we sniff traffic and put the results here. We can see some interesting information like the power. So we know what is probably the closest network. If we have a directional Wi-Fi adapter, then we can actually point this towards the source of a network that maybe we're looking for. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to go ahead and select this network, which is our test one, which is actually a um, wireless extender that's currently disconnected from the main network for testing purposes. So even though we'll be attacking this, we're not actually going to be denying anybody access to the internet. Um, because uh, that would get kind of complicated legally um, for a variety of reasons if there were other people involved on this network. So to be safe, we'll just select this disconnected one. So here we can see there's available different phishing scenarios, and we're going to select the firmware upgrade page. Now, this page is basically designed to look like a mobile-friendly version of the router, telling us that we need to update or put in our passwords so we can continue. Now the hook here is we're going to also keep deauthing the main network, meaning that they cannot use it until they agree to put in this password. So this attack is kind of tricky because it means that they'll be continually punished by not being able to get on their main Wi-Fi network until they give us what we want, which is the password. So we're going to select option two, and then uh, this should go ahead and just start running automatically. And after a little bit, we'll see a, uh, here we go, a a uh, dashboard that shows us more information about the fake network that we have created and some other devices that have connected. Now on our victim device, we've actually just been kicked off our network, so now um, the computer is attempting to reconnect, but you can see that there is actually a Harman Fernandez uh, network right here, and while we do get a warning that we previously joined it as WP Personal and it is now open, we can go ahead and join to try to figure out why we're suddenly not able to join our network. What's going on? Why, why is it not working? So as soon as it connects, we should be served with the phishing page, and we should also get a notification on the attacking computer that somebody has joined this network and is now, uh, there we go, and is now able to be interacted with. So here we go, we have a notification of a firmware update, and you might notice that this is a captive portal, meaning it pops up over the web page we're on, and we don't have to try to navigate to another page or do anything active, it actually just pops up on our screen, which is really convenient. So here, uh, there are a couple of fake options, and I clicked on these, and it turns out it just tells you that in order to access these, you need to update, uh, which is pretty clever. So if you haven't seen your router's uh, firmware update before, then this could trick you into thinking that this is legitimate because it's even, this is a Belkin device, it probably got that from the um, MAC address of the router. So once I decide I don't want to be kicked off my own network anymore, because uh, there's, again, it's, it's just going to keep kicking me off until I agree, I can t type agree, and then here is my big fat password. So I'll go ahead and start the upgrade. And then I think this is really mean. They, it, it makes you wait for about 10 minutes. First, they have this fake slider where the fake update's happening. And as you can see on our attacker computer, we have the password. Um, it's already done. But this poor person is actually stuck here waiting because as soon as the slider finishes, it actually pops up with another window that uh, tells you to wait for five minutes before attempting to connect back to the router. So. That's it. We got this person's password. It wasn't that hard. It looks pretty legitimate. And the average person expecting a firmware update, well, they might be put off by the 2016. But aside from that, this is a pretty legitimate way of getting someone to think that they just did something good. So, uh, you know, they're like, cool, I care about security. I updated my router today. Like, I did a great job. But on the attacker side, we've successfully tricked that person into thinking that they were interacting with their router when, in fact, they were interacting with our computer the entire time. Wi-Fi Fisher is a fascinating tool because it actually doesn't hack Wi-Fi at all. 
In fact, it's a social engineering attack against the fact that most people don't know what the login page looks like to their own router. Now this is a pretty common attack, so you should be careful if this situation ever happens to you. Suddenly your router or Wi-Fi cuts out, and then there's a Wi-Fi network with the exact same name, but open, nearby. If you see this, you should definitely assume that someone's trying to steal your Wi-Fi password and act accordingly. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any thoughts or ideas for upcoming episodes, send me a message on Twitter, because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.